Good morning, everybody. I'm here with Frankie, who has been eating all my plants, which is not, I wish you guys would tell him to stop it, because it's trying to get on my nerves. Anyway, we'll try to ignore him, which is probably going to be hard. It's probably going to be taking away the show. I'm going to read a story called A Rock is Lively. It's by the same authors of An Egg is Quiet, Diana Hutz Aston and Sylvia Long. There's some beautiful, beautiful pictures in this book. So I will show you as many of them as possible while also reading to you. A rock is lively. I'm going to write a book called A Cat is Naughty about Frankie because he is such an annoying cat sometimes. Bubbling like a pot of soup deep beneath the earth's crust, liquid, molten, and boiling. I know you guys like to play games where lava is something that you have to avoid. Depending on what type of rock that it is, a rock melts at temperatures between 1300 and 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. A rock is mixed up. Just like us. All rocks are made of a mix of ingredients called minerals. Just as a batter of flour, butter, and sugar makes a cookie, a batter of minerals makes a rock. The recipe for a rock might include minerals like aluminum, copper, diamond, fluorite, gold, gypsum, lead, nickel, platinum, quartz, silver, sulfur, tin, topaz, and turquoise. A rock is galactic. Outer space is a shower of rocky fireworks. Meteoroids are rocks that range in size from a grain of sand to a basketball. They become meteors or shooting stars when they streak through Earth's atmosphere and vaporize. Sometimes pieces of a meteor aren't vaporized and land on Earth's surface. These are called meteorites. Comets are balls of rock and ice, sometimes called dirty snowballs, that are heated by the sun and soar through space, leaving glowing ribbons of dust behind them. Asteroids are gigantic chunks of rocks and metal. They can weigh millions of tons. The largest known asteroid is 650 miles in diameter. It would take a person 352 hours or nearly 15 days to walk around it. Yeah, it's pretty big. A rock is old. Just like me. The oldest known rocks on Earth were formed billions of years before the sky turned from green to blue, before dinosaurs thundered across the Earth, before humans learned how to make fire. The oldest rocks ever found are nearly 4.5 billion years old. I'll show that picture again. A rock is huge. Or tiny. Considered by many to be the world's largest rock, Australia's Mount Augustus is a sandstone rock <coughs> with an elevation or height of 3,628 feet above sea level, about 1,000 feet higher than the world's tallest skyscraper. Or tiny. The carpets of sand on the floors and shores of oceans, lakes, and rivers come from larger rocks that have been ground through weathering into tiny grains. A rock is helpful. And this is a pretty cute page. It's got lots of animals on it, which I will describe to you. Some birds swallow stones to help them digest food. As the muscles in the gizzards of their stomachs move, food is chewed crushed by rocks in the same way humans use their teeth to break down food. Crocodiles, seals, and sea lions also ingest rocks. The extra weight or ballast helps them dive deeper and stay steady in the water. Sea otters lie on their backs and they use rocks to crack open shells on their stomachs. Seagulls drop mollusks onto rocks to break apart their shells. Chimpanzees and crows crack the hard shells of nuts on rocks. A rock is surprising.
some rocks need to be broken open to reveal their beauty. Geodes, round hollow rocks found mostly in deserts or beds of volcanic ash, hide sparkly crystals. The crystals were once liquids, but trapped inside rock for thousands of years, they changed into jewels of many colors. Agates too, with their colorful layers created by liquid deposits are often found in volcanic rock. There's that picture again, because it's very beautiful. A rock is inventive. Long ago, humans chiseled rocks into sharp edged weapons and tools. Flaky flint and obsidian rocks were chipped into arrowheads, spear points, axes, and hammers. Rough granite, sandstone, and lava rocks were shaped into mortars and pestles used for grinding seeds, rice, nuts, chilies, and garlic into food. Today, humans use rocks to make cement and bricks, paper and pencils, glass, and toothpaste. Oh, I did not know that. A rock is creative. Tens of thousands of years ago, before there was writing, ancient peoples told stories through symbols with colors made from minerals. They painted pictographs on cave walls, rock shelters and ledges. They chipped and pecked the surface of stones to make petroglyphs. That is fun to do. I'd like to do that when we get back to school. In more recent history, artists and builders have chiseled great sculptures and monuments from all kinds of rocks. There are limestone pyramids in Egypt, basalt and volcanic rocks on Easter Island, sandstone, dolerite, and others in Stonehenge, England. Here, I'll show you these pictures. Marble. Taj Mahal in India, Onyx by Isamu Noguchi, who's a sculptor. It's a sculpture of a mother and child. It's an abstract sculpture. Marble, um, David by Michelangelo in Italy, right there. And Mount Rushmore, which is made out of granite, which is in the United States. A rock is recycled. Sedimentary rocks like coal and limestone have eroded over time into smaller pieces of sand, pebbles, and gravel. Then were pressed together like a layer cake with fossils, seashells, and decayed plants. A rock doesn't hurry. Over thousands of millions of years, it changes from one form to another. This is called the rock cycle. In a process called erosion, a rock is squashed and scraped by glaciers, whirled by waves and rain and pushed deep into the earth until it turns into magma. Then a rock is once again lively. That's pretty cool. The end. Now I have a rock collection and I have, I have like so many rock collections all over my house and at my mom and dad's house in Connecticut. Um, but I'll show you some of my collections. I like to collect heart-shaped rocks, like this one. I don't know if you can see it. I have a few of those. This is kind of a flat heart-shaped rock. And here is yet another one. I also have beautiful rocks that are polished. Um, I like to keep them in pretty things like this bowl, which is something that you can do. <clears throat> This is rose quartz, and I believe, and actually I, I know for a fact, that Rosa's mom Maria gave me these beautiful rocks right here. They have been um, polished a little bit. Aren't they pretty? I, leave, I like to look at those. And this rock <coughs> is beautiful too. I don't know if it's amethyst or not. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a little cough. And this rock is really cool because it has a little shell on it. I'm not sure if you can see it, I'll put it right there. So if you have a collection of rocks, I would love to see it. I know Kevin would too. Kevin, as you know, has a lot of pet rocks. Um, before we leave, I wanna read a poem by another student at Hayground named Teddy, Teddy Rattray. There he is. 
he wrote a poem about the color blue, or as uh, Maria and Rosa would say, azul. Blue is water, blue is sad, blue is the sky. Blue is an earth sandwich, blue is blue. And I'll stop with that today. Uh, I'll remind you to keep playing, looking for, climbing, doing whatever you want with rocks, painting them, drawing on them. Um, also, don't forget that rojo was the color um, that Rosa and Maria talked about last week. So see if you can find something that's a rojo. I found my pin cushion and a few other things you can see here, pencil, towel, and maybe she'll introduce a new color this week. That would be fun. All right, I'll see you later. Bye.